You know, the Bible is so rich with wonderful words that quite often we pick up the Bible and we read it and we simply read words. And we need to really understand that as we pray for God's guidance, He will give us His guidance in His Word every time. Subject matter. What is worship? What is worship? I'm sure if I asked 10 different people, what is worship? I would get 10 different responses. Let's have a look at what the scriptures say. Worship is offering our lives as an act of respect to God. It is a willingness to exalt God and to yield to His will. Psalm 145. We can never comprehend all that God is, but the more we worship Him, and the more we, we, we love to worship Him with every breath, He reveals Himself to us. You can find that in Revelations chapter 5. Worship is an expression of our awe and praise for who He is. It gives the Lord the honor and the glory He deserves. Psalm 149. True worship is not only confined to singing in a building. I'm sure you have seen or have attended worship services where there is a whole number of guitars and drums and people playing the piano and various other instruments and young people singing and dancing and merrily worshiping God. And that's they call a worship service. Perhaps it is. They are giving glory to God. But it's not confined to just singing in a church building. It is a continual heartfelt acknowledgement of God and His power and His glory in everything we do. Worship in everything we do. True worship comes from knowing God and His good and glorious nature. The commonality in all of these answers is that we are the ones acting, praying, singing, praising. We are the givers, and God is the receiver. But when we examine the Scriptures, a different picture emerges. Jesus delights in serving us. Interesting. Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Did you get that? Not to serve, but to be served. Here we see the Messiah, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord Messiah, as to his disciples who he revealed himself to. He's as a lowly servant. The Lord wraps a towel around himself on the night of his betrayal. He took water and he washed his disciples' feet. Peter was offended that the Lord would do such a thing. Peter knows that this is the Messiah. This is God. And he's washing disciples' feet. In his mind, the disciples should be serving Jesus, not the other way around. But this is not how it is with Jesus. He came to serve and to save and to rescue us. Jesus is serving worship. He provides the forgiveness of sins paid for us on the cross. Thus, on one hand, worship and divine service of the gospel is received from God. And on the other hand, worship is to offer and present ourselves and our gifts to God. However, 
We can offer nothing to God unless we have been reconciled and born again. This passage, too, brings us the greatest consolation as the chief of worship of gospel is to desire and to receive remission of sins, to receive grace and righteousness. You see, our Lord delights in giving himself and his life for us and for our salvation. When we gather to hear his word and celebrate communion, that's exactly what he is doing. He is forgiving sins, giving us gifts, and serving us eternal life. What is worship? There is a great joy in having a clear answer from the scriptures. Worship is being served by Jesus. Jesus speaks, we listen, he promises, we believe. The voice of Jesus, which is now heard before the Father in heaven, is heard in our churches and in our consciences. And in this promising and believing, faith is fighting the devil. Faith is struggling against despair. And the Holy Spirit, faith wins. This is true worship. The question then becomes, what is the inner, authentic, Godward experience of the heart that we call the essence of worship? Jesus pointed us to an answer in John chapter 4, and verse 23, when he said, The hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Friends, those are most essential words. True worship is based on a right understanding of God's nature and a right valuing of God's worth. Of course, of course, God's worth is infinite. We cannot understand it or fully understand it. Thus, true worship is a valuing and a treasuring of God above all things. When we worship God, we begin to understand His Word. Then the word worship refers to what that valuing is, the inner valuing, becoming visible and in, the, in this world in two basic ways in the New Testament. One is the acts of the mouth and the praise and the repentance in worship services or small gatherings. That's we are expressing our worship to God. The other is the acts of love that show supreme value of God by what we are willing to sacrifice and do for the good of others. Brings in a new dimension. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15 to 16. Listen to this amazing summary. It says, through him, that is, through Christ, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. We've heard two words constantly, worship and sacrifice, worship and sacrifice. They go together very closely. So through Christ, two things become worshipful sacrifices. In our life, the fruit of our lips and the acknowledgement of his name that is, the worship services in singing and praying and repenting and confessing. And secondly, the fruit of deeds. 
Do not neglect to do good. Share what you have. Such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Both of those acts of worship. Both are acts of worship. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I appeal to you, brothers, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable, which is your spiritual service of worship. Now we see both of those words in one sentence. Spiritual service. Service and spiritual. So, all of our bodily life, all of the life that we live here on earth, is done in love for others and reliance upon God, will display the worth of God above all things and make us worshippers in our daily life.